Hey everyone, how's it going? Today we are talking static IPs versus DHCP reservations. I'm going to explain exactly what static IPs are, what DHCP reservations are, use case scenarios, and when to use each of them. Stay tuned, but first, a quick note. The video you're currently watching is designed to supplement blog posts at the Tech Journal, my personal technology blog at stephenwagner.com. If you haven't already been, make sure you check it out. We cover a wide variety of technologies from compute, storage, virtualization, and more. If you like this video, please make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. Thank you very much. Okay, everyone, so let's take a look at the blog post and get started with static IPs versus DHCP reservations. So just looking at the blog post, just to kick this off, um, the reason why I wrote this is because of uh, an incident that happened uh, some time ago that uh, just kind of put the emphasis on why I, I felt it was important to do a DHCP reservation. Um, a few years back, a customer of mine was purchasing a voice over IP PBX. And uh, what ended up happening is that the uh, voice over IP vendor, um, we actually weren't allowed to modify this box or do any type of network configuration for it. Um, when they were installing it, they asked me to provide them with a static IP address. Now, me being an IT, I know that the IP has to remain content uh, constant and cannot change. However, um, typically for devices like this, uh, instead of using a static IP, I tend to lean towards using a, a DHCP reservation. And so I asked the, uh, the technical representative of the voice for IP company to set it up uh, using DHCP. Um, he instantly got angry, ended up exploding and telling me that they need to be able to remote in, we need port forwarding rules, and that uh, by setting it to DHCP that um, they wouldn't be able to do that because the IP would change. Uh, this ended up ensuing into a massive argument where I explained that I'd be setting up a DHCP reservation, all I need is the MAC address, the IP will always change the same, and if I feel fit to change the IP, I can simply update the port forwarding rules. Um, he ended up losing his shiz and it turned into a big argument. We ended up having to set it to static. Um, but uh, that's pretty much one of the reasons why I wanted to write this article. Um, in my 14 plus years of owning my own company, um, in over 90 or 100 companies that I've taken over IT, um, I've actually never seen DHCP reservations being used by the previous IT company, except for maybe one case where they had a, uh, a printer configured with the DHCP reservation. And I still don't know if that was the company before me or even the company before them. So just moving on, just to state the obvious, um, a static IP address is an IP address that is manually configured to a device. Um, this includes the actual IP address of the device, um, net mask, subnet mask, router, DNS information, and possibly even WINS if you're using WINS. Um, DHCP, which stands for Dynamic Host Control Protocol, is a technology used that is um, essentially available to dynamically configure uh, network clients. And so if you attach a computer, much like your home network, um, to the network, the DHCP server that's running on your router or your ISP's modem will dynamically provide your computer the network information it needs along with an IP address to access the internet, to access network resources, um, to uh, have the gateway IP address, uh, so on and so on. A DHCP reservation now is a reservation that's con configured on the DHCP server that ensures that the exact same IP address is issued to that DHCP client every single time. And it's typically bound by a MAC address. Now, what's really cool is that uh, just taking it a step further, you can use DHCP reservations to uh, even configure certain DHCP clients with different settings than other DHCP clients in that pool. So for example, if you create a configure, uh, DHCP reservation, you can configure additional DNS servers. You can configure Pixie boot um, servers, uh, TFTP, boot file names and so on and so on. So it gives you quite a bit of flexibility to uh, to kind of centrally manage uh, some special configuration options for certain clients on your network. Now, just getting into a little bit of detail, um, we'll get into static IP addresses first and then move on to DHCP reservations. Uh, with static IPs, in my opinion, you only want to use them for server, network, and core network functionality with your top level infrastructure. And these are devices or servers or services that your network relies on at the very top of that hierarchy. Um, these devices are devices that are always running, always providing services to the network. And these are technically usually the device 
devices that the network relies on to function and to work. Um, these are the devices that you should always set a static IP on, as these IPs will usually always never ever change. And you have to keep in mind too that because these are manually configured, you want to make sure that your entire network is documented along with these static IPs so you always know what's going on. Um, an example of some of these devices that are seen with static IPs are servers, storage, uh, whether it's a, a SAN, a storage attached network, or a NAS, uh, network attached storage, uh, core level network switches, routers, gateways, load balancers, uh, printers, wireless access points, and uh, very rarely computers or workstations that are actually hosting services to the network. Um, and that's because what happens is that the computers, if they were to have IP addresses that, that change, it could cause issues when some of the other systems or uh, devices on the network try to reach out to those and, uh, and connect and use the services that they're hosting. Now, moving on to DHCP reservations, I've already explained that DHCP stands for Dynamic Host Control Protocol. Um, again, just a, a friendly reminder that uh, this technology was created to dynamically configure hosts on the fly. Um, essentially, in its most simplest explanation, when a computer or device is attached to a network, uh, it reaches out to the network to uh, look for a DHCP server. Uh, the DHCP server responds, provides I an IP address along with basic network configuration. Um, in uh, On home networks, pretty much every computer or device that you attach to your home wireless network is grabbing its IP address from the DHCP server that's running on the router. Um, and on business networks, essentially every computer or device that gets uh, hooked up on business networks as far as uh, computer and mobile devices go are uh, configured with these uh, DHCP servers. Now, jumping on to DHCP reservations, I mentioned before that I very rarely uh, see these being used, and it's 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 unfortunately it's a, it's unfortunate that they aren't used more often. Um, as far as uh, DHCP reservations go, there's uh, I put together a list of pros and cons here. Um, when you start implementing the uh, the DHCP reservation technology. You can uh, manage IP addresses and the IP reservations from a single pane of glass. Um, you can change IP addresses on the fly super easy from a single pane. Um, you can uh, manage network top topology for uh, remote offices, branch offices, or uh, offices or areas that are hard to gain access to physically. Um, you can uh, manage IP addresses for third-party devices that you might not be allowed to access their network configuration, but by having it configured for, as a, a DHCP client, um, you can simply modify the DHCP reservation, restart the device, and it'll pull that new config. Um, and again, as I mentioned before, you have the ability to configure special options uh, that you normally wouldn't have configured in your normal DHCP scope, such as uh, Pixie booting, NFS routes, uh, and that sort of thing. Now, the cons of using DHCP reservations is that it will always rely on that DHCP server to function. If you have a device or a computer that's configured with a DHCP reservation, if by chance that DHCP server goes down, when that computer either gets turned on or if the DHCP lease expires and it goes to renew, if the DHCP server is not there, you're going to be expecting some uh, some unexpected behavior. The device might disappear from the network. There's a chance that it might continue using its IP address. Um, but this is something that you have to uh, to think of and, and factor in when you're making the decision to use DHCP reservations. Um, now, one other concern here too is that if if a rogue DHCP server shows up on your network, whether it's a malicious uh, attack or an attempt, um, or if someone hooks up a wireless router, there's been times where I've had customers and the network goes down because someone brought in a, uh, a wireless router and decided to hook it up to the network thinking that they could get better wireless in their office. Um, this could potentially bring down um, not only your workstations, which are using DHCP, but also those servers or services that are configured with a DHCP reservation. And so this is something that you have to, to keep in mind. Now, some perfect candidates for uh, devices or computers or, or services that use DHCP reservations are wireless access points, uh, printers, second level non-core routers or gateways. Um, these are routers or gateways that your network doesn't depend on to run, um, but might be used for certain other things like uh, connecting to a, a remote office or branch office, a secondary network, or uh, perhaps another office. Um, IoT devices, 
IP phones, uh, voice over IP PBX systems, like the example that I mentioned at the beginning of this video, and uh, thin clients and zero clients. Um, just because again, you can just log into a single pane of glass and modify the network configuration if you need to. It's, it's really handy for that, especially if you have devices that connect to other centrally managed uh, pieces of software. Um, use cases that you'd wanna use this, remote offices, branch offices, uh, remote support environments, um, IP phone networks, and uh, wireless LAN access point VLANs. Uh, again, because you know, in some of the larger environments, if you have 10, 50, 100 wireless access points covering a massive warehouse or a large building, um, it's, it's difficult to manage these wireless access points if they're configured with static IPs. And it's in these situations where if you, uh, let's say that you get a crate of 10 new wireless access points that you need to configure, all you have to do is just log down the MAC address of those wireless access points and log into your DHCP server, create those DHCP reservations. And then essentially all you have to do is just hook the wireless access points up, they'll connect to the network and grab the proper uh, IP configuration information. Now, as far as, uh, uh, the most commonly used use case scenario that I see with DHCP reservations is with uh, customers that have remote offices or branch offices. Now, uh, an example here is uh, I had uh, an oil and gas co custo uh, company and customer that had offices in uh, hard to reach areas in Canada, the United States. And what ended up happening is in an effort to reduce on-site visits, which would require 12 plus hours of driving time um, on sketchy, sketchy roads. Uh, what we did is um, for their wireless access points, for their non-core switches, for their printers, we used DHCP reservations. And this was really handy because anytime something happened, like if a printer went offline or something like that, um, we could just remove it and uh, we could have a new printer drop ship directly to the location. Uh, I'd get a phone call from one of the staff. They would provide me with the MAC address. I'd create the rules. They'd flip on the printer. The printer would get the correct Mac uh, IP address and it would be good to go. It was the same thing with uh, remote maintenance. Um, if I was doing work on the remote environment, what I could do is I could actually get prepped. If I needed to change the IP address of, of a device, that would normally be configured with a static IP. Um, it's nice because if you choose the wrong network configuration while configuring a static IP, you could technically lose the ability to connect and manage that device, which would result in an on-site visit. Now, using a DHCP reservation, if by chance you type in the wrong network configuration and network connectivity is lost, you can simply reboot that device after fixing the, conf the configuration issue and it should be able to get back on the network. So it's kind of like having a backup or an emergency plan um, as far as uh, business continuity goes, it, it makes managing these devices uh, really, really easy. So um, again, it just uh, kind of builds into the whole uh, aspect of when it comes to IT, you want to have everything centrally managed. Uh, you want to make it easy to manage. And by incorporating DHCP reservations into your uh, strategy as, as far as managing and maintaining your network, um, it can really complement that and make it a lot more easier for you to manage and save you a ton of time. And that's about it. Thanks for watching today. On a final note, if, uh, if you want to hire me or my company to help you out with anything that you've seen in this video or other videos, uh, please feel free to head over to the Hire Stephen Wagner section on my blog, or you can head over to my corporate website at www.digitallyaccurate.com. Thanks for watching and have a great day.